I've got some melted chocolate here and I'm just going to pour some onto this plastic and leave it to cool and we'll come back to that. My name is Rox Middleton and I'm a physicist and I'm interested in where colour comes from. So I've got some paint here, that's one place it comes from, uh, you know you can put it put a bit there smear it about a bit, transfer the colour from one place to another. Um, but not all colour comes from pigments and that's kind of obvious if you think about a rainbow, for example, you see all of the colours in the sky but you wouldn't try and get a pigment out of the rainbow, you know it's just light bouncing off the rain. Or with CDs, you get lots of different colours in CDs but you wouldn't break open a CD and expect to find a pigment inside it. You know, it's just plastic and metal. Or think about bubbles. You get lots of different colours in bubbles, but the mixture itself is just green. And that's because they've added a green colour to it. Um, so nature has lots of pigments. So raspberries, for example, um, if you get a raspberry and you smear it on some paper, you get raspberry coloured paper. Easy. But recently I and some of the people that I was working with started looking at a different sort of fruit which is called viburnum tinus and looks like this. I don't know if you think you've seen one of those before but if you've ever walked through a town or city in Britain you will definitely have seen viburnum tinus. It grows on bushes that lots of people have in their gardens because it's a fruit that's really good for birds in winter because it contains lots of fat. While we were looking at these fruits, we came across something very troubling. If you take a viburnum tinus fruits and rub it on paper, you don't get any blue left behind. Fine, maybe it's got a shiny outside. So if you cut the fruit and then wipe it on the paper, you still don't get a blue colour. The pigment inside it is red. What's going on? We're used to the idea that not all colours come from pigments, but inside a fruit there's something weird. So we started thinking about how CDs make their colours uh, on CDs and on the kind of holograms that you get on your bank cards or on banknotes. There are lots of very tiny structures which match the size of light. So light is a wave and it has a wavelength and when structures are the same size as the wavelength, they, the light interacts totally differently and creates these amazing effects reflecting different colours in different directions. So then we zoomed right in to look at the outside, at the cells in the outside of the fruit using a microscope. And inside the cells, when you look carefully, there are hundreds of tiny layers. And it's these tiny layers that cause the blue light to be reflected without needing a blue pigment. Just like with the CDs, these shapes resonate with the light that lands on them and reflect blue light back into our eyes. And because they have this additional bumpy randomness, they're not as pure or specific as the colours in CDs, so you get a broader mix of colours and you also get colours that can see, be seen from all angles. And then underneath that structure, that's where you get the dark red pigment that we saw when we cut it open. We tend to think of the colours that we can make with CDs and with holograms as quite high tech, but nature's way ahead of us and is using this way of making colour to replace regular pigments. What's even more exciting about the structure in this fruit is that these little layers are actually made of lipids which might just be the fats that make the fruit so attractive to the birds in the first place. So let's go back to the chocolate. Here it is. Uh, it's, gone, it's gone hard. If I peel it off, you can see that I've transferred a nanostructure onto the chocolate so that you can see the colours are now reflected directly from the chocolate. And this is just the start. This is just the most basic way of transferring colour onto materials. If we can replicate what the fruits are doing, we could have all the bright and beautiful pigments that nature's um, creating with this technique from whatever material we choose. That's pretty exciting for the future of engineering pigments, but to me, what's really exciting is uh, understanding all the ways that nature has gone beyond our wildest dreams of engineering already. 
and it makes it worth having another look at the fruits in your garden.